By now, word has spread far and wide about Battlefront 2's shitty pay-to-win loot boxes. Should've known that free updates, content, and DLCs had to be counteracted by something. This is EA we're talking about, after all. For those who haven't been keeping up with the controversy, allow me to explain in detail how loot boxes worked in Battlefront 2's beta. There are a number of items you can earn from them, including star cards, crafting parts, and various types of cosmetics like emotes, victory poses, and outfits. The worst culprits are by far the star cards. These are basically upgrades that you can equip to your trooper classes, starfighter classes, or hero characters. They are substantial upgrades at that. For example, for the assault class, you can get a card called Assault Training that, when equipped, will allow you to gain a small amount of health back for each defeated enemy. All star cards in the game have four levels. At level one, Assault Training heals 20 health on kill, and at level four, it heals 40 health on kill. Which card level you get from loot boxes is completely randomized, but you can take a lower level card and upgrade them by paying a certain amount of a currency called crafting parts, which can also only be obtained with loot boxes. We'll get to crafting parts in a bit. The most ridiculous of these star cards is one for Boba Fett called Death From Above, which reduces damage when using the Rocket Barrage ability while flying with his jetpack. At level 1, damage is reduced by 50%, and by level 4, damage is reduced by 100%. That's right, equipping this card will literally make Boba Fett invincible while using the Rocket Barrage ability. There's stuff like this for every class and character, and if you pay real money to purchase loot boxes in bulk, you could potentially have all of these powerful benefits in mere minutes, whereas it would take someone who forgoes loot boxes days or weeks. And as you saw, these star cards definitely grant you enough of an advantage to most certainly help players win. You can also equip up to three of these cards, and looking at these locked slots here, you might be thinking, oh, well, at least extra slots are locked by player level, so that balances things out a bit. Nope, this is not tied to player level, they are tied to class level, and class levels are tied to how many and what level cards you own. What this means is that you could just buy a bunch of loot boxes in bulk, get a bunch of cards, max out your character's class level, and unlock all card slots in one go. And you could equip all of the overpowered upgrades that you desire. Can you earn loot boxes in-game? Sure, but it's a long and painstaking process. Each match will net you an average of 150 credits. It costs 1,000 credits to buy the cheapest loot box, so that's an average of 7 matches, around 15 minutes each, just to get one loot box that gives you one guaranteed star card and two random items. By my calculations, you have to play almost two hours to be able to afford a single loot box with just in-game currency. And here's the real kicker, regardless of how well or how poorly you do in a match, everyone will get the same amount of credits. It doesn't matter if you are MVP of the game or just running around like a chicken without its head. Whatever number you see as credits earned is what everyone earned as well. So there's no way to speed up progress by playing better, and in turn there's no motivation or incentive to play well in matches. It's a lose-lose situation for those who don't pay real money. You get to be at a distinct disadvantage, and you have no motivation to take matches all that seriously. Things go from bad to worse once we factor in crafting parts. You can only earn them randomly via loot boxes. Sometimes you'll get them, sometimes you won't. And when you do, I found that you get like 20 at a time. Maybe more if the loot boxes give you duplicates, which get turned into crafting parts. Setting aside the randomness involved in earning crafting parts, a major problem is that everything that involves paying crafting parts just costs way too much. For example, say you get a level 2 star card and instead of gambling for the level 3 or level 4 versions, you decide you'd rather use crafting parts to upgrade them. Well, upgrading a star card from level 2 to level 3 will set you back 120 crafting parts, and from 3 to 4, that's 480 crafting parts. Assuming that you get about 20 crafting parts per loot box on average, that's 6 loot boxes worth of crafting parts you have to get to level a star card from 2 to 3, and 24 loot boxes worth of crafting parts from level 3 to level 4. And when you account for the fact that it takes about 2 hours to be able to afford just one loot box, yeah, you can see how this shit 
starts to become pretty ridiculous. And again, you may not even get crafting parts sometimes, so you're not just gambling for star cards, you're gambling for the currency required to upgrade them as well. But wait, there's more! The game also allows you to craft weapons and weapon upgrades, but as Angry Joe was keen to point out, they cost an exorbitant amount of crafting parts. It's 600 to craft the weapon itself, and an additional 100 for each of the three weapon mods. So we're looking at 900 credits total to unlock and max out a single weapon, which will take around 45 loot boxes to earn. Now, another way you can unlock these weapons is by completing timed challenges and earning class-specific loot boxes, but even then, I believe there is a chance you might not get the weapon. So either way, you're gambling. You are either gambling for the thing you want, or for the resources to craft the thing you want. For the cherry on top, EA decided to add into the mix useless cosmetics to fill up space, so you're not always guaranteed to get something that will help with progression. You might get a stupid victory pose instead of valuable star cards or crafting parts that you want and need. So yeah, let's not kid ourselves here, this is probably the worst case of loot boxes yet in a AAA title. Good job EA, you have out EA'd yourself. Short of requiring some skills to move, point and shoot, it's straight up pay to win. Gamers were understandably pissed, and just yesterday, October 13th, 2017, EA took the time to address Battlefront 2's loot box controversy. Here's what they said. We know you have a lot of questions about crates and progression, so we want to clarify a few things, as the complete system was not in the beta and will continue to be tuned over time. There are many things you can earn in the game, including weapons, attachments, credits, star cards, emotes, outfits, and victory poses. As a balance goal, we're working towards having the most powerful items in the game only earnable via in-game achievements. Crates will include a mix of star cards, outfits, emotes, or victory poses. Players earn crates by completing challenges and other gameplay milestones, or by purchasing them with in-game credits or crystals, our premium currency. If you get a duplicate star card in a crate, you will get crafting parts, which you can then use to help upgrade the star card of your choice. And lastly, you have to earn the right to be able to upgrade star cards and unlock most weapons. You can only upgrade or unlock them if you have reached a high enough rank, which is determined by playing the game. We also have heard some players are looking for a way to play where all players will have the same set of star cards with flattened values. Like everything else, we will be continually making necessary changes to ensure the game is fun for everyone. We will work to make sure the system is balanced, both for players who want to earn everything, as well as for players who are short on time and would like to move faster in their progress towards various rewards. The most significant change, I think, will be that they'll tie certain star card upgrades or weapons to play or rank. I think that was one vital element that was missing from the beta that could potentially throw the entire game off balance. So I guess it's slightly less pay to win now, since you have to play the game to be able to get the best weapons and upgrades, but they never addressed just how painstaking it is to earn credits, how the amount of credits you earn in matches isn't affected by your performance, how little crafting parts you earn with each loot box, and how the entire progression system is still tied around gambling for rewards and hoping you get the ones that you want. They don't address how as a result of this system, people who purchase tons of loot boxes will still progress much faster and have an advantage over other players with high level weapons and upgrades, which means they're still paying to win. They don't address the fundamental ramifications that a system like this can have on a competitive multiplayer game where fair competition is key. EA's response is just a small band-aid to what's a system that's flawed to its core. But CEA doesn't give a fuck about that, they're just trying to find a perfect balance of keeping consumers at bay while being able to exploit them through rampant greed. For anyone who sees this response and says, oh, at least EA is listening to the community, don't be fooled. All they did was push the boundaries of what they could get away with way beyond the limit and then backpedaled a little bit following the backlash. They took two big steps forward and one step back. If we zoom out and look at this game for what it is, it's still heavily tied to microtransactions with a painstakingly slow progression system that revolves around loot boxes and gambling that practically demands players to pay and gamble 
their way to victory. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a culmination of years of negligence, years of defending this shit with excuses like it's optional, years of giving publishers an inch and letting them take a mile, years of letting them keep pushing the envelope of what's tolerable bit by bit. If you look at this, if you look at how far microtransactions and loot boxes have come and are still willing to defend them, then all I can say is enjoy watching the gaming industry decay and wither into a shell of its former self. If you think it cannot get worse than this, oh, just give it a few years. We thought this shit couldn't get worse years ago when this stuff wasn't that bad. And now fast forward to today and look at where we're now and it will continue to get worse for many years to come. Of that, I have little doubt. So we can make bullshit excuses, defend these practices and let that happen, or we can tell EA to fuck off and vote with our wallets because money is the only language they know how to speak. Your choice. I've already made mine. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below what you think about all this, what you make of EA statements. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon to help our community remain 100% independent. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.